Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Hello and welcome to this lesson on converting between units without graphs. So yesterday we looked at some conversion graphs which helped us convert between metric and imperial units of length, mass and capacity. But today we're just going to be doing the number crunching part of it, um, so without graphs today. You will be allowed your calculator for this lesson and for the worksheet today. You can also see, pictured on the right hand side here, um, a bureau de change and all the rates of currency exchange for different currencies. Now these might be different to the ones you found yesterday, which hopefully you've got to hand because you will need that in today's lesson. And the reason they're different is because these exchange rates vary quite a lot with the economy or with the world markets. So these, these things change quite regularly. Um, but I just wanted to show you that because that's something you will come across um, as you're you know, perhaps walking around town um, or in an airport. And hopefully now you know what that means. So let's get on with today's lesson where we're converting between units using some number crunching methods. So here are some important conversions that it's useful to know. You don't need to memorize them all. Uh, but it's just useful to know them. If there's one important one that I would recommend that you do commit to memory, however, it would be this one. This one crops up in common entrance quite a bit. So that is an important one that I would try and remember. Okay, let's have a look at some examples here. So we've got the units of length and the important conversions between those two. Here's an example one. So here we've got a cricket pitch and it says a cricket pitch is 22 yards long. How many meters is this? So what you need to do uh, at the beginning of every question where you're converting between one thing and another is to remind yourself and remind whoever's marking it that you know what the conversion is. And by that I mean this. So one yard is equal or roughly approximately equal to one meter. So that's what you need to work with. So therefore 22 yards is roughly equivalent to, well, 22 meters. But how do we get that? We have to think about what we're actually doing. We are actually multiplying on both sides by 22, basically. We are multiplying that one yard by 22 to get us up to 22 yards. And whatever we do on one side, we must do on the other. It's a bit like equivalent fractions. So we've got our conversion. And then we are using that to multiply up or scale up to what we actually want, which is this. How long the cricket pitch is in metres, 22 metres. Okay, example number two. It says vehicle wheel sizes are usually given in inches. How many centimetres is a lorry wheel of diameter 27 inches? Okay, so I've got a little picture here. Diameter is all the way across the circle here and you can see here it says 27. I've just said 27 just to, just to uh, keep it simple for today but you can see it says 27.106 inches. There's a little um, speech mark symbol there which means inches. So vehicle wheel sizes are usually given in inches. How many centimetres is a lorry wheel of diameter 27 inches? Well I'm going to put at the top of my question this conversion rate because this is really important that I show the examiner that I know that. So one inch is, e is roughly equal to two and a half centimetres. So I want to know what 27 inches is in terms of centimetres, or approximately equal to anyway. Well, what have I multiplied one by to get to 27? I've multiplied it by 27. So what do I do to the other side? You need, I need to multiply that by 27 also. 
So you can, of course, do this without a calculator, and that would be really great to improve your um, number skills and your arithmetic, but you can use a calculator on this occasion. So this gives you that the wheel is the wheel diameter is 67 point five or sixty seven and a half centimeters in diameter. Okay, example three. It says the flight distance between London Heathrow Airport and Geneva Airport is seven hundred and sixty kilometers. How many miles is this? Well, let's um, put that really important conversion down. That five miles is approximately equal to eight kilometers. But this time I'm trying to figure out how many miles. So I've got an unknown there. I don't know what how many miles it is, but I know that it's 760 kilometers. So actually I want to know how many eights are in my 760 kilometers. Well, how do I do that? I do 760 divided by eight. So I've actually multiplied that eight by 95. All I've done there is on my calculator, I've done 760 divided by eight to find out what my multiplier is. And whatever I do on one side, I must do on the other. So I'm gonna multiply that side by 95 also. So do 5 multiplied by 95 on your calculator and you would get 475 miles. And that's your answer there. Example 4. A bike wheel is 45 centimetres. How many inches is this? Well, I'm going to quote the important conversion which is that one inch is approximately equal to two and a half centimeters. And then I'm going to say, well, I'm gonna use part of the question, which is that a bike wheel is 45 centimeters. So I'm putting that there and I want to figure out how many inches it is. So like my unknown is on this side. So my question now becomes, how many two and a half centimetres are there in 45? Well, you can just do that by doing on your calculator 45 divided by 2.5, which tells me that that is 18. So my multiplier there is 18. And whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. And therefore, I get that the bike wheel is 18 inches because 1 multiplied by 18 is 18. Example 5. In a bread recipe it says to use 1 pound 7 ounces of flour. How many grams is this? Just a reminder that LB you say as pounds but pounds in this sense is a unit of mass not the pound that we know as the currency. So I'm going to quote the um, conversion, but actually, before I do that, I'm just going to take this bit away because a pound, one pound, I can see here, is equal to 500 grams. So I'm not even going to do that bit of the question. I'm just going to convert my seven ounces. So I'm just going to quote that top one, which says one ounce, that's what OZ is, one ounce is approximately equal to 30 grams. So therefore, seven ounces, this is a bit from my question, seven ounces here is approximately equal to, well, how many grams? Let's have a look. Well, what have I done to the one? I've multiplied it by seven to get there. And whatever I do to that side, I must do to the other. And I know that 7 threes are 21, so therefore 7 lots of 30 must be 210. But I've got to remember that I'm doing 1 pound and 7 ounces, so I'm going to bring in my 500 grams, which is there at the top, because that was 1 pound, and add my 7 ounces here. 
and I get an answer of 710 grams. So that's how many grams? One ounce and seven, one pound, sorry, and seven ounces is. Example six, a school gets a delivery of 14 pints of milk. How many litres is this? Well, let's quote this conversion. So one and three quarter pints. I'm just going to abbreviate pints to PT. Is approximately equal to one litre. So I need to figure out 14 pints, how many litres that is. So I don't know how many that is yet. What do we have to find out? Well, we have to find out how many one and three quarters are in 14. So you're going to do 14 divided by one and three quarters to find your multiplier, which gives you eight. And then whatever you do there is the same on that side. So one multiplied by eight is eight. So eight litres get delivered to the school. Final two examples. Example number seven. Mo Farah runs the 10 kilometre race in the Olympics. How many miles is this? Well, let's quote that really important conversion. Five kilometres, um, oh, not five kilometres. Five miles is approximately equal to eight kilometers. So five miles is roughly equal to eight km. But this time we want 10 km. Well, that's a bit of a, a tricky one because how am I going to get from eight to 10? Well, my recommendation here is to find out what one kilometre would be. Well, how do you get from eight to one kilometre? You need to divide by eight. And then how would I get from one back up to 10? Multiply by 10. So let's do that to both sides. Let's do exactly what we've done here. Let's do five divided by eight to get something there and then let's multiply it by 10. So let's see what we get there. So five divided by eight gives me 0 0.625 miles is approximately equal to one kilometer. So that's miles there. And then how do I get from that up to 10 kilometres? I need to multiply it by 10. So 0 0.625, I'm going to do one jump in the place where I get table to the left. And I'm going to get 6.25 miles. So 6.25 miles is your 10 kilometres approximately. And the final example, the London Marathon is 26 miles long. A Dutch runner wants to know how many kilometres this is because they train in kilometres. How many kilometres is 26 miles? Well, again, I'm going to use that really important conversion. Five miles is roughly equal to eight kilometres. But I need to get up to 26 miles. Well, Five doesn't go into 26 in a nice way, so I would recommend you go to one mile here and find out what one mile is. Well, how do you go from five down to one? You divide by five. Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. to get 1.6 and then how do you get up to 26 again from 1 you multiply it by 26 
and multiply that side by 26 as well. So 1.6 multiplied by 26 gives me 41.6 kilometers. So that's how much they'd have to train to know that they are practicing well for the marathon. I'm just showing you this method of going down to one mile and then scaling back up. Um, you can, of course, do 26 divided by 5 and just do it in one step, like we've been doing in previous examples. But sometimes it's just it can be a little bit easier just to follow it by going down to what one mile or one kilometer is. So you just have to sort of think about which which situation it is and work it out accordingly. Sometimes it works just going in, in one, one step, but you might just want to break it down to find out what one mile is. So I'm just showing you sort of two methods here. Especially in this situation where um, it was quite hard to get going from eight to 10 sort of thing. It was easier just to break it down to one and then scale back up to 10.